Hi, and welcome back to another podcast of Sunrise in the Sundown. On this episode, we're going to talk about how provider and family involvement can help elders and seniors avoid isolation, neglect, and the consequences that can come from that. In this Utah home, standing behind me, in this neighborhood, they recently experienced a situation that nobody really wants to experience, including the senior involved and the family as well. A couple weeks ago, this Utah family was in their home when they heard a sudden crash. A few doors down, a neighbor who is older and suffering from some neurological issues and possibly a seizure, uh, decided to go grab Panda Express. Unfortunately, his wife did not know he was leaving and she was sleeping and he took his vehicle up the street. Um, either having a seizure or due to confusion, visual impairment or otherwise, uh, he swerved and hit not this vehicle, but a vehicle placed in the same position. And the car was uh, close to totaled. Um, he swerved in a S-like motion and ended up hitting the corner um, axle of that car. He then continued, although his vehicle was totaled, um, he continued to force his way up this street and all the way down. Uh, neighbors came out and they assume that this neighbor was under the influence of some kind of alcohol or drug related incident. Unfortunately, he continued to operate the vehicle, um, forcing it down the street, um, driving erratically, um, and hit another vehicle on the way down. Uh, the car was unable to continue to be driven, but he still forced it to move, got it to crash all the way at the end of the street. It was a really sad situation for this older gentleman and this family since he did not necessarily want this situation to occur. But due to uh, isolation and neglect on his family and, and maybe even his provider's fault, had been given the opportunity to drive. Um, it's a difficult situation because many in his circumstance still need independence. They still need the opportunity to be able to take themselves places. So this kind of uh, situation is frustrating because all he wanted to do was grab a bite to eat. To elaborate a little bit more on this situation, as well as I'm sure many others that are similar to this, uh, this husband and wife met with this family inside and uh, they talked for hours after the accident and um, come to find out they, uh, they have been very much alone, I would say neglected, isolated from other people. They don't have family and friends who reach out to them and check in on them. It's been a while since he had seen a provider and he had been struggling with some issues. Uh, the wife was doing the best that she could to take care of him, um, but he was still wanting to be independent. He was stubborn and wanting to do certain things a specific way. Uh, the wife was very, very uh, apologetic and sorry because she felt that that responsibility was on her. Um, sadly, many seniors, I'm sure, in this same situation where they want to maintain their, their spouse's independence or even their own, and they're finding as they age that it's becoming more and more difficult to take care of each other. Um, I think that we find with many people, they're still able to maintain their independence, but we really need to be changing our mindset and checking in with those that we care about and maybe even those around us, our neighbors and those who we come in contact with because um, when they, for example, in this circumstance, get behind the wheel, they can affect other people's lives outside of their own. Um, so we really need to be focusing on those who could be neglected, that could be isolated um, because they might not have the things that they need. Uh, this family also, um, this neighbor down the street um, from this family, they also have hoarding issues. When they came over to help them, they found them. Uh, the wife had tripped and fallen and as they were passing by and they came to help her. They found that uh, the door couldn't even open all the way because they had hoarding concerns um, or, you know, the house was so mismanaged that they couldn't even enter the home all the way because the door was so blocked with things. Uh, their garage was completely packed with, with items as well. So this poor couple is subject to a lot of different struggles and they're not the only ones and um, there are lots of people so we'd like to bring some attention today on some of the things that we could be looking for to help people avoid the consequences that could come from neglect and abuse so today we're speaking to the families to neighbors to people surrounded by uh, senior citizens that could maybe use our help our awareness um, paying attention to them i'm also speaking to senior citizens there are many people who um, 
all the years of their life are able to maintain independence and do the things that they would like to do on their own safely. I think being self-aware is really important. Um, so being aware of where you are at and how safe you can be and especially while operating in a vehicle is important. So we want to talk about some of the issues that could contribute to, in this circumstance, like impaired driving. So um, stiff joints and muscles that can inhibit your reaction time. Um, trouble seeing um, obviously can be an issue when driving and operating a vehicle. Uh, trouble hearing can make it difficult for you to hear uh, cars or other uh, you know, things around you. Um, we can also see that medications can affect your driving. Um, sometimes combined medications you might not realize interact and can equal uh, side effects that can alter your driving or your ability to uh, take care of yourself and others. Um, one thing that's kind of tricky is for people who struggle with maybe dementia or other kinds of memory issues, uh, those circumstances are difficult because you or the person you care very about might not always be aware uh, that that could be an inhibiting factor in their ability to drive. Um, I'm going to be quoting the National Institute of Aging. They say people with dementia often do not know they're having driving problems. Family and friends, uh, I'm going to put in providers as well, need to monitor the person's ability to drive and take action as soon as they observe a potential problem, such as forgetting to find familiar places at the grocery store or even their home. Work with a doctor to let the person know that they're no longer safe to keep driving. Uh, this article goes on to say, you know, being aware if you notice that people around you or even yourself, if you notice like scratches or ve uh, damage to your vehicle that you don't quite remember happening, that's an issue. Or if you feel like you're losing control control of your your driving or close call incidences you notice people honking more than usual um, those might be things to keep in check uh, in this institute uh, of aging they go on to say that people who are self-aware are less likely to get in accidents or to cause damage to those around them um, simply because they do limit their their driving to places they're familiar with and in circumstances and environments they're familiar with usually people who are self-aware avoid driving in impaired weather conditions uh, that could affect that situation as well so being self-aware and aware of those around us is a huge uh, a huge factor in protecting uh, not only those who are driving, but those who are on the road as well. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety says, functional impairments can interfere with driving and may become particularly evident in stressful or challenging driving situations, such as turning left, merging and changing lanes. Se several studies have shown that higher levels of physical, cognitive or visual impairments among other uh, among older drivers are associated with increased risk of uh, crash involvement. Um, so I think that shows that as we age, as we have physical and mental, physical, cognitive um, impairments, that that can affect our ability to um, operate a vehicle. With that said, like we discussed previously, being aware of those circumstances, we can um, reduce those chances, reduce those risks. Um, I think we can also find that it, it, despite taking away people's licenses or putting restrictions on it, it is still very important that we give independence, we give opportunities for people to still live their lives. Um, with our senior citizens, we can find increased levels of anxiety um, and uh, depression. They can also have um, increased levels of abuse if they're isolated at home with no um, social interaction. So taking this away or at least being aware of um, senior citizens operating motor vehicles, I think we still have to allow them to, to live, but providing better resources. There are public transportation options. There are facilities that will pick up um, senior citizens and take them where they need to go, taxis. But I think we need to do a better job of providing those op options, those resources, so that they have safe, reliable modes of transportation when they reach that point that they might feel that they're at risk while operating a vehicle.